Today we're going to be taking a look at the best of RGB fans. This channel is made possible by you, the viewers, in supporting this channel, hitting that subscribe button, watching the content, and by joining me as a YouTube or Patreon member. That really does go a long way in making these, well, videos and fan testing possible. So thank you to all of you who uh, continue to view and support this channel. So as a note, there may be fans in this video that I haven't produced videos yet. The videos are coming. I'm just a single person. It takes me a while to get them going and get through things. So they will be here, but this gives you a good rough overcap. But it is all the RGB fans I've tested and how they rank against each other. This contains both 120s, 140mm class fans, and is regardless of price point. I do have uh, another video that will focus on price and not RGB, and I'll have another that is just best of the best. So let's get into it. First up is the case simulation test. How to use the data. Well, over here is the first data point, and it's the six inch mark. That is a small form factor case, think mini ITX, but it's a special kind of ATX where it's still got a front to back airflow type design. Think a case that can hold 120 millimeter, millimeter class fan in terms of its length, again, assuming that air cooler. Then we have the nine inch mark. This would be a case that could hold a standard ATX or MATX motherboard, but not any extra room. Think of a case that can hold 220 millimeter class fans. The GPU would be about the same length as the uh, motherboard. So we'd focus on that. Then we got the 11 inch mark. This would be standard mid towers, 320 millimeter class fans, something along those lines. And we got the 14.5 inch mark. And that is your truly large towers. Think something like the Fractal Design Torrent and uh, or 340 millimeter class fans. So you do want to pick a fan that is optimized for your size computer case. So it's pretty clear the best of the best across most of the ranges is the TLS-12. Very subtle RGB on that fan. Competing right behind it is the Loop FTP-140 from EK. Then at shorter throw distances, you've got the Unifan P28. It does, you would need to mod that fan with um, like these adapter plates to give it RGB, but I counted it ridiculously expensive. But hey, that is not the purpose of this video. It starts off great, but then it kind of sits in the middle of this best of the best. These are the top picks. I want to make sure I said that. I don't know if I remember I did. Anyway, so then we got the Mobius 140p, and it actually ends up being the best at 14.5 inches. So if you know what kind of size computer case you're gonna get and plan to only use in the future, you could pick the very best. If you don't know, you wanna figure out which one sits the best with you overall. Again, this was for noise normal results. How about at 100% PW pan signaling? Well, the very best is Loop FTP 140. Except for when you hit the 14 profound mark where it jumps, drops into the middle. Also competing very well is the Unifan P28. Holds up fairly well overall. Um, kind of crossing paths with it a couple times. We got the EK Loop FTP 120. And then we got a whole bunch of other fans that kind of get mixed together. Like the M25 and Blue Diamond is the Mobius 140P. So it gets a little bit difficult to see like all the nitty gritty as we go through it. But it gives you the very top picks. And all these fans I would consider still very good. They are the top picks in terms of the RGB category. Then in the case sim test, we still got uh, airspeed versus decibels at the nine inch mark. Again, demonstrating the top pick fans. So right here we have in its low RPM range, the TLS 12 at a little bit higher noise levels. Across the post of it, we have the Loop FTP 140. And then a whole bunch of other fans kind of drop around it or kind of sit around it like the Mobius 140p does really quite well then it kind of flattens out and does pretty well overall and this is the EK Loop FTP 120 so you get to see how different noise levels equate to different air speeds for all these fans it isn't a linear behavior in decibels versus meters per second and then we take a look at the same thing in Sone. Sone is just a different way of taking a look at noise I have a little piece on my channel about decibels versus sewn if you're interested but it helps stretch out higher noise levels so that there's more differentiation between them and uh, well you can see how these fans really rank up against each other and it also has the effect unintended side effect of also cramming 
lower noise, to uh, noise levels together. But if it's a low enough noise, it may not bother you. So it's actually kind of, in my opinion, okay that it does that. Now we have performance through my CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. And these are noise normous results. The very tippy top best is the Unifan P28. Then we have the Loop FTP140, the Mobius 120P ARGB, Unifan AL140 version 2, TLK12, TLS12W, and you can see the list and what equivalent air speeds we got going on. Oh, as a note, before I talk about this next graph, I do have a radiator I've started doing testing on. However, the testing is not as extensive, and what I'm finding so far is that air speeds going through it are equivalent to that of my uh, CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A, so I'm effectively calling them equivalent at this time. I'm not saying that they've got the same cooling potential, I'm saying that the air speed going through it is equivalent. Uh, mm, I hope with help from viewers like you, becoming YouTube members, watching the videos, becoming a patron, what have you, that I'd be able to afford a test system soon to be able to actually incorporate thermal testing into my graphs in the future. I'm just not quite there yet. So anyways, at 100% PW fan signaling, we've got the Unifan P28, as well as its noise level at 24.8 decibels. Then we got the Loop FTP140 at 27.1 decibels. Then we got the Swafan EX14. Uh, the noise level got cut off. Mobius 120P. We're going to have the raw data at the end. Don't worry, it will be visible uh, because I'm transparent like that. Uh, we got the Fantex M25 140. So let's keep this moving. So then we got cooler airspeed versus decibels, noise level. So right here we got the P28, and it really shows that it's a great, quote, RGB fan, as long as you add that RGB strip to it. Then we have the Loop FTP140, not sitting too far behind. The screen one is the Unifan AL140 version 2, uh, Mobius 140. And you can kind of see where these top pick fans lie. And taking a look at the same data in Sone. If you're wondering why some of these fans joggle off to the left and then bounce back and then continue on their path, those little zigzags come from resonant or harmonic frequencies within the fan. Um, vibrations running through it through the motor, vibrations with how the airspeed travels through the blades, uh, how things interact. Anyways, once you get past those frequencies, that RPM, the fan generally quiets down a bit and becomes more noise efficient. So better fans have none or fewer of them, worse made fans tend to have more of them. So this gives you an idea how the fans rank and I have them in what I consider the rank order. Now we're on to the value proposition. I mean, you're looking at RGB fans, but you might as well know which RGB fan is the most cost effective, maybe? So the TLC14 in a six inch case is the very best, followed by the TLS12, the Sickle Flow 120. It apparently has an RGB version. I did not test it, but I'm assuming that they are the same. The M25 has an RGB version. I tested the non-RGB version. The CF121D, ARGB, 120 Unifan BR Digital. I do not recommend that fan despite it ranking very well. It had lots of harmonics in it. TLK12. And then if you're taking a look at larger towers like the uh, for the 11 inch mark, mid towers, value TLS12, TLC12, sickle flow. It's a very similar order and you can take a look at that yourself. Then for coolers, noise normalized. So this would be a lower thermal load. So not quite as high-end systems, you'd focus more on the side, the TLC12, TLS12, SickleFlow, ARGB. Am I reading the same names over and over again? Well, yes, because fans that tend to do well in one test can potentially do well in another test. At 100% PDOM fan signaling, we got the C12, S12, SickleFlow, M25, do-do-do-do, and if we take a look at the one of the top performers, the P28, is significantly worse value than other fans, even though it's a top air performer. So you need to make a choice as to what is the most important to you. And not included in this testing are extras that these fans provide. So like the P28 has a fan interconnect system, the, the Unifan system, as well as the attachments that can go on the side. The Unifan AL140 and 120 is that interconnected system, Unifan 
the swap in EX, 12, and 14 have an interconnect system as well as the ability to swap fan blades from forward flow to reverse flow, depending on how you want it to look. So it can give you better physical appearances. It also makes it easier to clean the blade, but I also have questions about longevity, more dust built up inside of it. The Unifan Infinity, that is a favorite of mine in terms of its physical appearance. It has that interconnect system as well as Unifan. The interconnect is how easy the fans just kind of click together and don't need any um, like straps and stuff. The CF120D has an interconnect system, but uh, not that, not Unifan, so its RGB uh, header is a little bit more basic. The Unifan S series, again, all other fans are RGB, but don't have extra features. They are just RGB. Uh, that may or may not be, may not use a cable to interconnect, interconnect fans and RGB lighting. So again, it's just kind of a, I separated the fans out that have special features. Others just are RGB fans, and it's up to you to decide if extra features are worth it to you. And that brings us to the end of the video with the raw data. Uh, we have the overall ranking on the leftmost side, and then we have performance through the cooler next uh, at noise normalized, and then we have performance through the cooler at 100% from uh, worst to best in kind of reverse order again. Then we have through the CB, through the case simulation test from best to worst, and again at 100% from best to worst. So it gives you a good idea of how these fans really ring up against each other. So I know I've said it before, but if you like this type of content, please crush that like, bu like button. Uh, think about joining me as a YouTube or Patreon member. That really does go a long way in making this channel sus possible. I'm trying to get the point of it being sustainable, as opposed to right now where it's not sustainable. Uh, buying fans is pretty significant expense, and... I won't have the finances to really upgrade what I'm doing overall with this channel, which is kind of an end goal for mine. Um, but other than that, if you've got suggestions for ways to improve videos, I'm open to that constructive criticism. I'm always trying to improve. If you want to see me test any specific fans in the future, uh, please go ahead and list those down below. I'll take a, try to see it. I'll take a look if I uh, can buy it for future testing. Anyways, thank you very much for watching Computer Tech and More. I hope to see you next time.